Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining me. My name is Kristen and I am unboxing the November 2023 Ink Flight box. Oh, ooh. okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got Pannonia inks. Although Pannonia offers 41 ink colors in its standard lineup, owner Mate Bigfavi actually has a portfolio of over 200. The Ink Laboratory is a way to share these fun experiments and reduce waste. For the names, the letter references the type of color. L equals violet, for example. Okay. And the number is sequential. The higher the number, the more recent the color. If you must have a bottle of any color in this month's box, you'll have to contact Pannonia to see if they have more in the laboratory. Oh, wow. Okay. What's the story? Rodia Rama. Okay. <laughs> Bob Ross. I love this. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. I like this one. <laughs> Look at that. That's so cool. Yes. Have you ever had a happy accident with ink? Embrace the joy of writing with the Bob Ross style inktopus sticker, courtesy of our pen pal, Vanessa Langton. Cool. Nice. Tell tales both real and imagined on the reporter style Rhodia web notepad. The colorful leatherette hardcover opens flat or it can be folded over while you jot, dream, or muse away on the fountain pen friendly 90 GSM ivory brushed vellum paper. Every page is micro perforated for easy removal to organize or toss your work. I like the smoothness, this leatherette pad. That's cool. Oh, ooh, I like it. This is some really nice smooth paper. So the perforation is like right there at the edge of the orange. Nice. So 96 pages, 90 GSM. I love this. It feels so smooth. I like it. <laughs> I'm gonna test this out later. But right now I wanna get into these Pannonia inks. Cool, I'm excited. I'm always excited for Ink Flight. Pannonia Ink Laboratory K010, or should it be K10? Mate says this is one of the more popular ink laboratory colors that straddles either a blue or green with chroma shading. Okay, this is a weirdly dry ink, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, this is one of those, this, this looks kind of stubborn. Like it does not want to hold on to the paper. Okay, so maybe it was just being really weird on Tamoy River paper. The verdict is still out on it. It's looking good so far on other papers. Pannonia Ink Laboratory L17. A strong candidate for the standard lineup, this bold bluish violet is the richest ink in this set. Ooh. I don't know if I have any bold colors from Pannonia, but I do kind of like this color. Pannonia Ink Laboratory L18. Created exclusively for a Hungarian pen turner, this berry-like purple color has a juicy flow. They're so pretty together. Look at that. I like them. Mix. Ooh, yes. I think I might like the berry like purple a little bit more than the, the blue violet. Yeah, I think I need to make a decision on the types of purples that I find attractive. And this is nice. I like this. I haven't tried very many inks with this color in this color. I like these cool tone colors so far. I like this, this berry color, this berry purple, but I really like all three of these together. They look so good. I wonder if I like this color by itself or if I really just like it because it is sitting next to L17. Pannonia Ink Laboratory P6, one of the first reds Mate created in the laboratory. This light pinkish red darkens around the edges. P6 is stubborn, just like K10, at least on Tamoy River paper. Mm hmm, I knew it. There's that shade of orange that just does not work for me. Pannonia Ink Laboratory S11. This muted darker orange has strong shading with undertones of yellow. I wonder if it depends on the pen that I use for these types of inks. Could I fall in love with an ink color just based on the pen that I use? So what if I put this in my Yoseka Home pen? Would I enjoy that? I don't know. There's not much shading going on. The first I thought it was just that I was not laying enough ink down on the page, but I think I am. Like, look at that. P6 looked like this or pretty similar to this. There's not very much shading unless it writes slightly dry in a pen. The way the text looks coming off of this glass nib as it writes drier, it looks like there is a bit of shading, but in a wetter pen, for example, the scribbles down here, there is not much shading at all. 
So the heavier application areas look like they're exactly the same color as the lighter application areas. So this part that dried first is basically the same color as this area right here that had like a little puddle air earlier. Pannonia Ink Laboratory Z5. This zesty bubbly green ink has lively shading. I hope to see some shading. I haven't seen much of any so far. Pannonia Ink Laboratory Z15. This lightly saturated muted green has undertones of brown giving this ink a complex character. Sound like this is right up my alley. Yeah, it depends on what the shading does while it dries. I really, I actually kind of like the peachiness of this S11 on Iroful paper and Cosmo Airlight paper. I like how it looks on coloring paper. So these are the ink light samples on cream to more river paper. I really like almost all of them. I don't quite like S11 on here. It does still have like that hint of yellowish undertone to this color here. It's probably a little bit more noticeable on the Cream to More River paper just because of the colors. And the Z5 is a very nice color, but it's not something that I would go out looking for because I've had something very similar to this. I'd rather have something that's a bit different from this ink color. And I'm not too crazy about this, at least on the Cream to More River paper. The ones that I really do like so far are the L17, L18, and Z15. I was a little bit undecided about Z15, but it's actually a pretty nice color. K10 is also kind of nice, but I think I've tried quite a few inks in this color already, but I would really be interested in trying these two and Z15. Okay, so this is a Cream to Moy River paper and the White to Moy River paper. Just taking a look at the two of these side by side. This S11, I think I would just need to try this one out in a pen to really get a better understanding of what this looks like in actual writing. Because it looks like a weird color to me. I don't know. It is really riding that thin line between too yellow and just right for me. I'd rather have something that's a little bit more peachy than this. This looks more like that sickly orange. I don't know how else to describe it, but this brings me back to that solution stuff that my grandparents used to put on my wounds whenever I skinned my knees or my elbows or something as a child. So I'm not too crazy about this shade of orange. L17 and L18, they look so much cooler on the white Tamoy River paper. I actually really like them on the cream paper to warm them up just a little bit, give them a little bit more warmth. But this looks just about blue over here and I'd like it to be a little bit more purple, and I'd like this to feel a little bit more berry colored, but I still really do like these inks. I do enjoy at least the look of them. Z15, I'm warming up to Z15 a little bit more and more. This is also reminding me of this cover, the color of this cover, and this is a bit too blue, but I really do like this deep, desaturated sage green color here. Let's take a look at some of the other swatches. So we've got Midori paper, Cosmo Air Light paper. See, look at those two colors right there. Yamamoto Bank paper, which brings out even more yellow. Iroful paper, see that peachy color? I like the peachy color on Iroful paper and the Cosmo Air Light paper, right? Yep, Cosmo Air Light paper. And then here we've got Tamoy River paper. Let's take a look at K10. There is like this grayish undertone or this like the chroma shading in the description it says either a blue or green with chroma shading blue or green with chroma shading so i guess it's a blue green color with chroma shading but the chroma shading that i see is a gray so that's that one i'm not too crazy about it probably because of the gray peeking through and the fact that it just does not want to behave on tomorrow river paper with that ink as well as z5 those two inks don't quite like Tamoy River paper, and that's gonna be a big issue for me because that's the paper that I'm using basically every day. So it's gotta behave well on this paper. The L17 and L18, I really do enjoy those two colors. And I like the shading that I do see, the hint of shading that I do see on Iroful paper. It's got a little bit of shading, but I don't see very much shading in any of these inks, except for maybe Z5, maybe? There is shading on Cosmo Air Light paper. I see like a hint of shading here. I think the shading in these inks is probably going to depend on the pen that you use. Because if you have something that's going to write, that's going to lay down a whole bunch of ink. For example, L17 looks the same from left to right. But for Z15, you might see a bit of shading. Z5, yes, a little bit of shading. And these two, it probably depends on how wet or how dry the fountain pen is, and maybe even the, the nib width. 
not too crazy about this ink. I really do like this one. I do like this one. The P6 is okay. I like how it turns more of a watermelon type color here, a soft watermelon here on Earful paper. It's a nice bright and bold ink on Tamori River and what's this one? Yamamoto bank paper, but I'm not too fond of this shade of red. I would wish that it would be a little bit warmer, but you know, I don't have to like every single color. Do I really do like, I do like how this looks on those two papers. There's a bit more gray. These colors are a bit more softer, a little more pastel on Earful paper and Cosmo Air Light paper. S11 is a little bit more peachy on Earful paper and Cosmo Air Light paper. On Yamamoto bank paper and Midori paper, this Z15 looks a bit more warm and it's somewhere in the middle on Tamori River paper. So like this cool tealish color on Earful paper and Cosmo Air Light paper. It's got a bit more of this olivey color, olivey chromal shading thing going on here. And it's somewhere in between like this teal and olive on Tamori River paper. So I'm very curious about this one as well. I'm pretty pleased with how well they dried. This first one, yeah, it's got like a hint of gray over here in the larger, heavier pooling areas. So there's not very much shading with the colors on the top, but there might be some hints of shading depending on how your pen treats the ink. Let me bring up my coloring cards so that I can see what I have that's similar to these ink colors. So we've got Pinonia K10 next to Laban Hera. Yes, very, very similar to Sailor Shikyori Shito Shito. Although I think I would prefer Shito Shito. Goryeo Celadon. Venta Inks, Peria, Parrotfish, Laban Poseidon Green, Dominant Industry Lake, Monteverde Iced Cookie, Robert Oster, Miami, Troublemaker Inks, Abalone, Sailor Ink Studio 123, Kyono Oto, Hisoku. Okay, L17 next to Dominant Industry Periwinkle Blue, Waterman Serenity Blue, Pilot Iro Shizuku Ajisai, Monteverde Peace Blue, Diamine One More Sleep, Ferris Wheel Press, Tanzanite Sky, Van Diemen's Ghost Ship, so L18 next to Van Diemen's Tasmanian Lavender, Krishna Mountain Breeze, Stipula Purple, Dietra Menace Purple Violet, Octopus Fluids Aubergine, Andorillium Purple Gallinule Purple, mm, Octopus Fluids Right and Draw Violet Giraffe, Diamine Amazing Amethyst, Krishna Dili, Weringul the Great Gatsby, Grafham Faber Castell Violet Blue, Noodler's North African Violet, uh, Palio Shizuku Murasaki Shikibu Diamine Violet. Private Reserve Purple Mojo. All right, here's P6 next to Vampire Squid Red by Andorillium. Waterman Audacious Red. Diamine Cozy Up. Diamine Wistful Watermelon. Colorverse Hubble. Incubar 241 Alice Red. Diamine Poinsettia. Laban Aries. Robert Oster New York. Stipula Florentine Red. Octopus Fluids Write and Draw Pink Gazelle. Van Diemen's Tassie Salmon. Here's S11 next to Robert Oster Brandy. Weringo Kyongi. Robert Oster Whiskey. Diamine Autumn Oak. Very similar. This yellow undertone. Diamine Caramel Sparkle. Also very similar. There's just a shimmer on Caramel Sparkle. Troublemaker Mango. Octopus Fluids Orange. Stipula Saffron. Noodler's Apache Sunset. Ferris Wheel Press. Pumpkin Patch. Pilot Earl Shizuku Yuyake. Diamine Peach Punch. Dominant Industry Earl Grey Tea. Here's Z5 next to Sailor Ink Studio 280. Krishna Bamboo Shoots. Pilot Earl Shizuku Chikurin. Krishna Gat Green, Roar and Klingna Altko Grun, Venta Inks Leite, Grafham Faber Castell Olive Green, Ferris Wheel Press Peter Moss, Ferris Wheel Press Central Park Greens, Kobe Ink Number 19 Minatogawa Lime. Now we've got Z15 next to Octopus Fluids Write and Draw, Green Ostrich, Jane Austen, Van Diemen's European Honey Bee Eater Wing, Colorverse Alpha Pisces, Monarca Manglar, Warangul King Lear. I don't really have anything that's very similar to this. Like really, Honeybee Eater Wing and Colorverse Alpha Pisces are pretty close, but they're the wrong, they have the wrong undertones. So these both are a bit bluer. I kind of like this. I like how unique it is, at least in my collection. I don't have anything like this in my collection. I will not be inking up additional pens for the month of November from this month's ink flight box because I have some other plans that are going to take place in November and December. So the ones that I am really interested in checking out are these three inks. I might even bump it down to these two inks. My next currently inked video is going to include these two fountain pen inks. I'm just not sure if it's going to be December or January, but you will see these two inks very, very soon. Wait, wait, wait. I forgot about that. 
Before I wrap up, I want to go ahead and test out this notebook with my November currently inked pens. Yes, I'm glad that I can do that. It takes up much less space. The Sharpies, the only thing that bled through. Nice clean break without having to prep it beforehand. So that's cool. It's very nice and smooth with these pens down here. Good quality paper. Has a little bit of shadowing. What is it? Not shadowing. Ghosting. That's the word. It's got a little bit of ghosting. But definitely not as much as the Tomoe River paper would do. That's pretty good. It's a really good notebook. I'll definitely be using it. So that's everything in the November 2023 Ink Flight Box. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you all in the next video. Have a good day. Bye-bye.